Welcome back. It's the Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. Now, despite claims by the federal government that it will put measures to cushion the effect of subsidy removal, its decision has caused widespread economic consequences as no measure has been put in place. The federal government, the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, are engaged in an eight-week deadline to resolve all contentious issues and implement the resolutions arising from the demands of labor. Nigerians with more than two cars have resorted to the use of just one, but well, some have also cut down their daily expenses as prices of goods have gone up. This is even as a new tariff regime is about to commence in the energy sector. Now, Mukhtar Mohammed joins me now as we look at what Nigerians should hold Tinubu to account for economically after May the 29th. Thanks for joining me, Mukhtar, on Business Insights. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Justin. All right, so Mukhtar, I think I should start this way. Uh, the TUC, the NLC and the federal government, they said they were supposed to discuss the fate of Nigerians. Uh, they said eight weeks. But um, it's been four weeks right now since, uh, or over four weeks since uh, the introduction or the removal of your subsidy. It's as though Nigerians are the ones actually bearing all the burns because, like I said, things have gone up, transportation costs have doubled, or even more than doubled, and yet it's as though the so-called uh, cushions that we were expecting to see have not even come on spring one month after. Talk to me, Mukhtar, what's going on? I think the, uh, the, the current administration is still enjoying the honeymoon period <laughs> with Nigerians, and so Nigerians are still, um, um, I mean, um, just watching. But I think that period is beginning to get over now, like you, like you said in your, uh, in your introduction. Um, it's over a month now that the subsidy has been removed, and yet there's no palliative for the ordinary Nigeria. The government can say, oh, the economy looks buoyant, uh, we've been able to bring back black market exchanges, there's a parallel market, and so uh, people are, are, are appreciating what we are trying to do. And I put that word appreciate because whatever we've seen thus far is pronouncement. We've not seen the structure to guide this pronouncement for us to see the kind of result that we are expecting. But I can tell you the honeymoon period is over, and Nigerians will begin to ask questions uh, about what is it there for us now. Because it, Nigerians never have, never have problem with the mobile subsidy, but their problem has always been how will this money be spent? So yeah. definitely we are back to that status quo. Um, you've removed subsidy, you've saved over 400 billion. Uh, what are your plans for workers? Are you going to see are you, what is the percentage increment in terms of salary? Mm -hmm. um, by knowing that petroleum is tied around everything. And if the president said he took that decision on his own without his uh, left hand putting it in his speech, I thought he would have taken the decision also to increase workers' salary without going to his left hand also. But I think um, what has happened is that um, the president was in the haste to do it, and he did it. And ordinarily, I think they would have wanted this negotiation to go through before they would remove the subsidy. But like I said, there's no good time for a better policy. The president has said it. It has saved us about 400 billion. Mm. Uh, he didn't want to. The, the, the more he stayed to ponder on whether to remove subsidy, the more we begin to pay the subsidy. I think it was a good move. But now it has to be action, especially in the area of palliative. All right. But Mukhtar, another question would be, don't you think uh, that uh, the government per se was biting um, much more than it could actually chew, uh, looking at the fact that it was actually bringing several policies that is affecting the bottom line of um, companies, uh, even the income of um, Nigerians. Specifically, I mean uh, the subsidy removal uh, coming at the same time with the unification of exchange rate, because there was a ripple effect, and uh, marketers, independent marketers were complaining that they, they could not really... Uh, import fuel over time, although the story is changing. But what do you really think? I think you, you answered the question. The story is changing. The story <laughs> has changed. <laughs> so, uh, you see, 
those policies were policies that were long overdue. Let's be let's be let me say it here. It were policies that were long overdue, but um, somewhere along the line, no none of the previous administration had its political will to do it. Uh, I think we log a village and tried to do it, and the same people that are in power now were the one that frustrated it. And so I, I think um, if you look at the unifi unification of the exchange, in ordinary, you should bring price of goods and services down because before now, exchange has gone as high as 780, 800. It's right for those that assess the bureau, they change uh, outside the, the government window. But now it has stabilized at 750. Ordinary is supposed to bring down the goods of services. But I think we will not see those immediate results anytime soon. But I, I personally think that. Uh, with time, with the policies in place, mm. we we'll begin to see those results. Um, I, 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 I know, very soon. I know, but very, very soon it's as though uh, what we've been, uh, what we had uh, in the gospel, the kingdom of God is nigh, and all of that. But the question right now would be, uh, it's as though there have been promises. Fire. We're talking about unification of exchange rates, and you said it, it closed at over 700 naira, which is a bit still higher, if you ask me, Mokta. So, when will it be, Uhu? How soon can we be uh, taking that breath of fresh air, really? Um, and, let me let me let me let me first of all say, for the past eight years, we've bred, yeah. we've not bred fresh air. You know, <laughs> uh, we saw the exchange rate move from 180 to. To, to 800, mm. 850, so we didn't see any fresh air. So we, we don't expect magic. I mean, the economy was really battered. I said it in your program that um, in spite of all their infrastructural, uh, whatever they've been doing, the economy was not really, um, uh, the economy was in a very bad shape. We don't expect him to do magic within the next one month or two months, but I, hopefully, by the third month of this administration, especially when he gets the cabinet in place, mm. when we see who the cabinets are, we could begin to see a game changer in a lot of things. Like the exchange rate you're talking here, even the, the the Bank of America have said it over the weekend that the Naira is undervalued. So that's a good thing. For the first time, we are here, international organizations say, look, your Naira is even undervalued. That means it should, it should work more to the US dollar, mm. which is a good thing. And they target it at about 668. And so I, for me, I think the Naira will stay at 650. If you look at where we are coming from and where we are, then, then the, a lot of um, things that this will eliminate, corruption and other things, then you, you need to know that um, it's, it's a greater process because the economy was not destroyed in one month. The economy was destroyed in eight years. So you mm. don't expect it to be fixed in the... So we're we expecting, are we, are we expecting it to be put back in order in another eight years or how exactly? Okay, that's just... Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the I, think, I think we'll get the economy back in, in order in the next... Uh, let's, let's, let's see the first... In the next the quarter? Let's see the first hundred day of the administration. Let's see uh, okay. what has come up with. Uh, okay. Remember, uh, you just said in your report, the uh, independent petroleum marketers will soon begin to bring petroleum products. Hopefully. We are con beginning to liberalize that sector. Okay. We also see Dangote refinery. Hopefully, July is the date. Mm. We see it come on stream. Um, all that could end up bringing the price of um, PMS. And also, the unification will begin to see the foreign investors coming when it's stabilized. And I, 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 I know stability for the exchange rate has a lot to do with the microeconomy indices, which those will not change overnight. So for the exchange rate, we, we could go into uh, towards the end of the year, we, we begin to see stability. But in the area of PMS, which is yeah. practically what determines price yeah. in Nigeria, I think um, in the next two to three months, we'll see um, a very good response in that area. All right, Mokta, right now um, I'm actually keeping my fingers crossed, uh, you know, uh, hoping for the best. Uh, but uh, let's look at other things right now. Specifically, let's talk about inflation. Everyone knows that uh, the, the, the cost of uh, uh, food inflation has actually gone high and, um, you know, transportation cost. I just want us to just um, project uh, for the, as in ahead of the NBS, what do you, uh, what's your outlook? What do you think uh, the inflation rate would look like uh, uh, for June that just ended. Well, the inflation is going to be high. Let's 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 not not deceive ourselves. It's going to be high because uh, we see the effect of the removal of subsidy. We see the effect of the unification of the exchanges. All will come into effect. So definitely, the exchange, the the the, the inflationary pressure will be high because a lot of goods has gone up. 
um, of recent, especially with the unification of the exchange rate and the removal of subsidies. So definitely, I think inflation will go high. We need 22 percent. Don't be surprised if we get to like 24 percent in in uh, May when the figure comes comes out in June. Mm. And that would even also be good if you if you look at in terms of price increment in PMS and other items. When you look at those increments and by, by inflation just increasing maybe slightly by two point something percent, I think it's not too bad. Okay, on a final note now, as we wrap up with you, Mokhtar. So what should Nigerians be looking forward to? I know you said we should give um, the present administration, uh, you know, three months, 100 days uh, to put uh, its cabinet and its house in order after doing the house cleaning that uh, the president talked about. But in terms of palliatives and all that, uh, one would have thought it have been under immediacy and yet nothing has been done. So what should Nigerians be looking forward to? Or should there, is there any hope? maybe this month, in your opinion? There, there's a lot of hope, hope and in the fact that the government said they are still negotiating with labor. Mm. Uh, they said they're going to have eight weeks. We are in the second week of that, so we are left with six weeks. Right. Um, Mabel said it doesn't, it, didn't, it doesn't mean that it's eight weeks that we see the change. The change will come in gradually mm. as they agree, they implement, as they agree, they implement. So if you look at that, I say uh, anytime soon, mm. Nigeria will begin to see relief, especially the working class. And my only challenge would be if you increase the public sector, what happened to the private, private sector? sector. Are you going to mandate them to also increase salary? Good for low economic pat patronage. Mm. That would be my, that for me is going to be a big challenge for them. All right, thank you so much. I've been speaking with Mukhtar Mohammed, uh, economist, international finance um, expert. Thanks for all of uh, your inputs on the show as always. We do appreciate them. My pleasure, Justin. Have a great week. Yeah, you too. So as we go, uh, 2030, uh, Nigeria will top the League of table of most extreme poor people in the world overtaking DR Congo, India, and Madagascar if deliberate steps are not taken to stabilize the economy. But this was the submission of Professor Stefan Deccan while delivering his keynote address at the launch of the State of Enterprise Report. I'll leave you with details of that and I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.